Good morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog. Welcome back to another edition of the control panel build where we're picking up from the last vlog but I believe it was the one where I explained that we were having some type of feedback into the boil kettle lights, the mash pump lights, the HLT lights uh, through the solid state relays with a little bit of leakage current. So whilst there wasn't any real power going through there a few, maybe three or four milliamps was making it through and that was enough to give the LEDs a low dim glow on the panel itself. So what I've done this time round is we've taken uh, the feed to the lights and instead of sending them directly from the solid state relay outputs where they will go obviously to power the elements we're just tapping off a little bit of a line feed to power the lights instead we've uh, taken a separate feed and we're now using the 12 volt solid state relay uh, switching current to power one of these uh, 12 volt relays so this side we've got 240 volt relays or 220 and then over here for the lights we've got 12 volt relays I didn't mean to pull the lid off oh, I'll try that one there we go they're 12 volt DC relays and then what's happening is when the solid state relay is activated by the PID over here it also closes the contacts on one of these relays these relays have a separate live feed going through their normally open contacts common to normally open and that allows the power then to go through without interfering with the solid states and directly into the panel indicators the lights at the front of the panel to show us indeed that the element is on or off so what we will get is these main lights will turn on and off to indicate that we've switched the element on but these lights will only come on and off when current is actually traveling to the element itself so these will flick on and off with the PID as it's sending pulses of power to the elements so whilst it was something that I didn't initially intend to put into the build I didn't take into consideration that solid state relays due to the very nature tend to have a little bit of leakage current because they're not physically breaking the uh, the line voltage what they're doing is using uh, I think it's MOSFETs or some type of transistor to cut the current electronically whereas with a contact to relay you get a physical break in the line which is why the contact to relays tend to wear out a bit more under high load because every time it breaks the contact you get a little spark which degrades the contact surfaces like a little welding flash whereas with the solid state relays you can have thousands and thousands more cycles out of those before they pack up than you can out of the contactors but the good thing about uh, so, uh, about contactor relays is you just pull out the worn out relay and put in a new one and you don't have to worry about undoing any wires or anything it's just as simple as that so because I've had to do a bit of modification the cables are open a little bit the looms aren't as tight as they were when I started to wire this up so I'm going to go in there again with some tie wraps and we're going to put it all back and make it look neat again uh, we've got all of the external connectors ready to go I just need to wire up the other ends on the pumps you can see that they've all been soldered and heat shrinked into position and they run to their corresponding section here we have for instance an actual thermo probe in place a PT100 in place of the connectors because we will be very shortly wiring up the proper connectors but I needed to test it of course to make sure it was working so yeah I'm gonna get back under the hood tidy all this up and then I think we'll be about ready to mount it onto the pilot kit itself which is sitting out there sorry for the shaky camera work I'm trying to hold the tripod but yeah it's out there waiting folks 
to be tested and we'll be doing that hopefully today. Hello folks. Right, that's a bit of a cut there because what we've actually done is jumped now to Tuesday a couple of days later from uh, a few of those updates that we tried to put together then. Now the reason is because we had a few gremlins in the system which I had to iron out and quite frankly I didn't really have the time to do that because we have a heritage day going on in Retford this week and I wanted to capitalise on that as much as possible by doing a couple of brewery tours and of course advertising the fact that we are you know Nottinghamshire County Camera Pub of the Year 2019 so I had to kind of get these banners made for a start these are going to go on the wall at the side of the canal so I had to get these printed off but not only did I have to do that but I also had to make sure that this uh, microbrewery kit this uh, pilot kit is actually functioning because we're going to do an open day and people are going to come in and watch me brew a couple of beers as part of the brewery tour so as you can see we've got stuff flowing through it at the moment so I managed to iron out those gremlins we've got the boil pot tipped forwards that will be utilised to minimise dead space in the boil pot when we come to run out into the fermenter we've had the HLT heating up at the moment I've got some Cosgleam, some caustic in there that's been recirculated and we took that up to 80 degrees C at the moment we're transferring the rest of that caustic into the mash tun and then out of the mash tun and into the boil kettle so everything gets a good run we've cut all the hoses so it may look a little bit complicated but basically all these hose pipes are as short as they possibly can be to reach where they have to reach with the exception of this one which we will utilize to fill up our fermenters and no we haven't decided what we're going to do for fermenters yet folks so let me talk to you about what happened with the control panel while I've got your attention so have we got water over the elements yes we have so when we turn the elements on as you can see that looks great then we turn the second one on brilliant you can see on here we're using 5.77 kilowatts or 24.3 amps and indeed the elements are on so all good but if I turn that off and then on again it won't re-illuminate look but if I turn that one off and back on then that does so the problem here is on the inside of the panel these PIDs, the Inkbird PIDs, only output 30 milliamps 12 volts to switch the solid state relays. That isn't enough really to pull in two contactors. So I had to put these two contactors in because we were getting some leakage current from the solid state relays and the bulbs were dimly illuminated which made it look like they were on when in actual fact they weren't so all of this had to be rewired so we had to add uh, one two three more contactors these are 12 volt contactors and like I said the 12 volts coming from the PID is just not enough to latch the relays which is a shame so this is why on Tom's panel when we decided to go for a low voltage panel front we had a separate 24 volt power transformer in there and there were many people who'd left messages on his and my video saying you've got the wrong PIDs you want the ones the VRLs which is the uh, relay low, vo low voltage of course the trouble with that is that 30 milliamps on Tom's panel would not have had the power 
to illuminate all of these panel indicators and latch all of the contactors. The solid state relays will latch at a low voltage, low current, but these will not. So that's why on Tom's panel we decided to go for a 24 volt separate PSU. So because I've done that, I went for the different PIDs and almost everything's the same but of course that is becoming a problem. So that 30 milliamps uh, is just enough if I remove the indicator. You see this little indicator LED? Well if I remove the indicator LEDs from these contactors, which I do anyway to prevent, prevent them burning out, then it's just enough to latch and allow us to turn on both of the panel lamps for the boil kettle. So, that aside, that was uh, that was one gremlin in the in the panel build. The second gremlin was we installed a different coloured heatsink to the top. Now you can see that this one's black, and this one's not got bolts protruding through it, which makes it look a lot better because it's got a thicker base here. So I've been able to tap the base and screw in the relays from the underside as I intended to do initially. So I had to take that off and rejig it and reinstall it. That took half a day in itself. And then round the back, I had to remove and relocate the mounts for the TV bracket. It was too high up and the whole panel itself kept tilting forwards. I could not tighten this section here enough to prevent it tilting. So as you can see, we've had to pull that down. Now the problem was that the bolts for that, the nuts were behind this back panel. So I had to undo all this back panel, loads of the cables and lift it up and out of the way to get to the new holes that I drilled to install that. Again, that took a couple of hours to do. And then when we got all of it installed and mounted and turned on, lo and behold, a couple of the probes and a couple of the float switches didn't work. That was round here. I'd obviously not soldered them well enough on these XLR cables or aviation plugs, so I had to come back to that. That took more time. Then I contemplated making some type of sling for the cable harness, and in the end I've decided, in the meantime, because I need this up and running, to just tie wrap it to the frame. And quite frankly, it is relatively neat and pretty much out of the way. So there we go folks, without wanting to ramble on too much, a few things have changed. We've decided to put valves on the outlet of all the pumps because I had them spare. I was going to make an, a matrix for the inlet of the mash tun and the HLT, but we've decided not to do that. Instead we've just gone for a little bit more length on the hose and we'll move the hose instead. That gave me a load of spare valves. So I've put the valves down here on the outlets of the pumps and uh, the plate chiller has been installed. We've got some metal tie wraps and or big jubilees and uh, on the outlet we've installed a valve. On the inlet we've just got a cam lock fitting. So if I open this now we will see for the first time cleaner or caustic running into the chamber or we should do at some point uh, if I remove this hose and install the other one which is let's just leave that on the floor which is this one here so we're basically leak testing this now. So this has got cleaner in it. So we'll open that. We'll open that. And there we go. We're going to see some liquid 
running into there very shortly. It would appear that there's still some liquid in the mash tun. Yep, there is. So we'll put that up there so we don't lose it. And we'll turn on the boil pump. And there we go. So that's now pumping through the plate chiller. And uh, well it will eventually when this airlock disappears and back into the tank. We also moved this recirc arm on the side here. Now, I've put an elbow at the bottom and taken away the short bit of pipe that we made simply because, well, I had a hole at the front of the tank and I had nothing to put into it and it enabled me to shorten the hoses instead of having to stretch them right over here. So this remains plugged I don't know what to do with it yet. Maybe nothing, we shall see. But that's a bit of a recap, folks. It seems like a bit of a hasty one because like I say, we're a couple of days in to what I can only say was a mad, mad rush to get this system up and running. But I promise we will do another recap when I've got a little bit more time on my hands. I really am pressed at the moment. I've got grain to order, I've got hops to order and I've got beer to brew. So a bit of a mouthful there guys, but I'm sure that's enough to give you an idea of what we're doing. I'm not going anywhere, but like I say, it will be a few days before we manage to put another video together because we've got quite a lot on at work and I'm afraid business has to come first in this instance. So we'll see you in a few days time. Don't go anywhere, keep your eye on the channel. Make sure you've hit that notification icon so you do know when the next video is out. And I'll see you as soon as I can. Cheers.